Okay, recording is going. Okay, here we go. Let me shut the door. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning. This is Dr. Michael Schuster at the Schuster Center. I hope you're in a quiet, uninterrupted place so that you're not running out between patients or between different things so that you can really concentrate on what we're going to be talking about in the next few minutes together. Uh, I want to talk to you just for a moment uh, about uh, our logo because our logo has a specific meaning to it. If you look at it, it's divided into five different er uh, areas or lots of times I refer to them as domains. The bottom domain is the domain of uh, survival. The, the bottom domain is in, in the world that we speak of at the Schuster Center is the money domain. Uh, so many people that I meet get stuck there and they never move out of there because they never get control of money. The second domain up from there that's partly yellow and partly green is the safety, security, predictability, order, etc. domain. And this is the domain uh, that so many people live in that are that are caught in the I the illusion of security that somehow that they're going to have security and they get stuck there and their whole life they they spend, you know, focused on, on security. The next level uh, of, of meeting or our human needs is the area of love, love and belongingness. This arena or this domain is an area of relationships. It's the area where the emotional component of us human beings becomes extremely, extremely important. Not that it isn't in all areas, but we really focus on relationships and love and giving and receiving love. Uh, and many people get stuck there. You know, there are addictions uh, that are even in this domain. The next level, the fourth level, uh, that I would like to uh, point out to you is the level of, first it is um, self-esteem uh, and then it's other esteem. In other words, other esteem is what people think of us. In this area, this is where all of our uh, skills, all of our capabilities, this is the area of self-image, self-esteem. This, this area is a tremendously important area in human development because without this, much of what is below really will never really happen. The highest level, the little pyramid at the top, although it's all a pyramid, the pyramid at the top is what's been described by very various people as wholeness, um, integration, uh, self-actualization, individuation. In other words, it's at this level that uh, a person has been relatively capable of fulfilling all their other needs, and now they're focused more outward in the world rather than inward. And the seagull represents you, or represents me. It really is the Jonathan Livingston seagull story, which is the emblem of the center. Okay, so. The logo really represents each human being's journey on their path or journey of life. And we, that is, and you know, when I do these webinars, I, I, I don't know if you understand this, but they take about 12 to 15 hours just to prepare 45 minutes. So I always do a lot of my own self-introspection and really think about, you know, myself, where I am at this in my journey of life. So we either get stuck at the lower levels of our human potential or we learn, we grow, we evolve through actions, through nothing else, not thinking, but through actions, and we become more fully functioning, more fully alive as God intended us to become. So nature develops us up to a certain point. In other words, we're so to speak endowed with survival and security instincts but then it leaves us to either learn, to grow, to stagnate, or die. So dental school has taught you about the clinical aspects of dentistry so you can pass a state board. The Schuster Center was founded to teach you how to grow a practice and profit, engagement and fulfillment. We are the first business school ever developed for dentists, and now we were the first online 
right in your own office, business school, working with you one-on-one -on, -one on your team. For 33 years, we've been preferred, the preferred destination who dentists, for dentists who want financial freedom, emotional satisfaction, spiritual fulfillment, and balance in their lives. Today, dentists are either going to get better or they're going to get sucked in the abyss of managed care hell like physicians are, one or the other. So there are three really core elements in your business, and I would also suggest that spill over into your life that you really have to take responsibility for if you're going to grow and evolve. And one of them, yes, one of them is money. Because unless you get control of money, money will control you. The second, and equally, and, and most of us really believe it's more important, is what we do with our time. And the third foundational element is organization. These three pieces are the three elements that determine whether or not you really can grow or not. They in themselves do not necessarily instigate growth, but without them in place, you can't grow at all. Then you have four other elements or really driving forces for growth. One is your ability to sell, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit today. The second is the market. The people you're serving, the, the offering that is the emotional takeaway that people get from what you do, which is why people buy. People buy emotionally and justify logically. The people, that is the people that you work with. The people you work with, their skills, their capabilities, their desire, their emotion, their involvement, their engagement or not, determines whether you will or you won't grow. You cannot grow in a high quality, patient-centered practice without people that are on your team that are talented, skilled, and engaged. And last but not first, in, in reality, it's first is purpose. Without a purpose people get lost. Without a vision, people run in all sorts of different directions. It is purpose, the values, the vision, the mission that whole, is the cement and glue that drives any or, organization and keeps it growing. So when we talk about a practice growth process, today we do online training with personal one-on-one -on -one coaching. And we always start with with finance and financial control because if you don't have that you don't have anything if you don't understand money and how it works and you don't have control over it and understand what it can bring you and can't bring you in your life I can confidently tell you after nearly four decades of working with dentists starting in 1973 at the Pankey Institute you aren't going anyplace I'm not going anyplace so what does it bring you? When you get control of money and understand it, it brings you financial peace. You get mastery over money instead of mastering, having money master you, and you always increase your net profit, at least 10%, most cases 50% and more. The second arena in the, is the issue of safety and security, which we transfer over into time and energy management. You know, time is more important, but it's also how we feel. It's the energy that we have. So with time and energy management, you get much greater control and predictability, uh, much greater uh, capability of scheduling properly. And what we find, on average, people that do this increase their production $100 an hour. So if you're working 1,200 hours a year, this is $120,000. And I'm talking about this economy right now. I'm not talking about 2005. I'm talking about now. The third area, which builds the core, uh, the third uh, training track, is organization systems and structures. What I want to say to you is you can't grow. You have no leverage in your business without organization. If you're running from pillar to post, if you're running your practice by the seat of your pants, you are not going to be in practice in five years. You are not going to be in practice. What that brings you is more order, less stress, fewer mistakes. Things become easier. 
they're more fun and in balance. But what creates the real growth is the market and especially the new patient experience. I'm going to talk just a little bit about that. The new patient experience is the keys to the kingdom. I don't care if you're an endodontist. I don't care if you're an oral surgeon. I don't care if you're a pediatric dentist. Your new patient experience is the keys to you creating wealth and freedom in your life. You've got to focus on the right patients because it's easier to work with the right patients, that's the market, and help people move forward with treatment, even in a down economy. And last but first, really, is the people purpose and the arena of communication. If I see anything lacking in dental practices, it is, that it is communication with even the people you work with. So the staff becomes engaged, they're involved, they're inspired. In other words, there's, there's two ways you can move people. One is you can manipulate them. The other way is you can inspire them. So if you've been in practice for three years, probably you're already in need of renewal. I want to remind you, even though you're on a webinar, and I don't know if you're totally here, I want to remind you that information is not transformation. This webinar, like all seminars, webinars, books and tapes, does not create transformation. If you take that word transformation and break it down, it's changing form through action. Nothing happens until you take action. We work one-on-one -on -one with dentists who want to create a practice that grows and net profit. You can take individual learning tracks that instigate growth the fastest and get you on a path you want for yourself, your family, and your future. So why is money so important? I have a few questions that I would like you to respond to. Do you worry about money? Should I? Do you feel like you have control over money in your life and practice? Are you saving more than $5,000 a month? That is $5,000 or more a month. Are you growing? Are you stuck? Are you moving backwards? So there are really two ways to get to know people. One is to live with them, the other is to see how they handle money. Each of us, every one of us, has a pattern with money. And we learned our pattern of behavior by observing our parents or significant role models in our lives. I want to remind you again, structure determines behavior. Structure determines patterns of behavior, determines results. The longer you stay in the wrong structure, the worse things get, the harder they get. The longer you're in the right structure, the easier things get, the simpler they are. Most people that I've met never have enough money, no matter how much money they have or they're making. So there's a new poverty. <clears throat> making $200,000 a year and feeling poor. If you feel like you never have enough time, it's because you either haven't taken the time to create healthy structures and healthy patterns of behavior with money. So I've inverted the triangle for you so we can look at this together and we can think about this and you can think about where you are, your life, what preoccupies your mind? And here's a question for you to think about. What keeps you awake at night? So when you're stuck with money and survival and security, I can assure you that you're self-centered. And of course, then the issue of security is you're still stuck on self. And if you're stuck on survival and you're stuck on security, there's not much space or room in your life for the issue of community. 
So what gets crowded out of our life is people and love and relationships. And then for a lot of people, and I'm not saying this is you and I'm not saying it's me, I'm just putting this out for you to think about where you might be. A lot of people spend a lot of time trying to get esteem from other people, what they drive, where they live, who they hang out with, the country club they belong with, where they take their trips. It's really cool, and they're spending their life trying to get others to look up to them. So there's little time spent with esteem from the inside. You know, we... We feel good on the outside, and by the way, this is not what this webinar is about, but this is how addictions begin. When we're really not happy and we start to fill in from the other outside from some other thing, and it's not just drugs and alcohol, it's money, it's possessions, it's materialism, it's a lot of things. And so there just isn't time and energy to ever become a complete and full human being. I remember meeting with uh, Joan Forrest of the Dawson Academy, and we met for a day together, and she made this great statement, and I asked her if I could quote it. She said, you can't do complete dentistry unless you're a complete human being. So does money really impact the quality of care that we deliver? Are you kidding? So it becomes money, and then time gets smaller, and love gets smaller, and esteem from the outside gets bigger, esteem from the inside gets bigger, and purpose? What are you talking about? I mean, if I did a seminar on purpose, how many dentists do you think would show up? Purpose? What are you talking about? I don't need a purpose. You know, I don't need a plan. I don't need to understand my values and who I am. I just need more new patients and more money. So money gets bigger and gets bigger and gets bigger. And pretty soon, we think we can solve all of our safety and security problems with money. We think we can solve all of our love relationships with money. We think we can fulfill all of our needs for human interaction with money. Then we begin to think, this is our culture, by the way. This is something you have to fight. We begin to believe that we can solve all of our self-esteem and self-image needs. Certainly, the more money I have, I must be more important. I must be better some way. And we think that money ultimately becomes our purpose. Do you know in 1971, General Motors made the statement, we are not in business to build cars. We're in business to make money. And that's when the demise of General Motors began. So we all have a structure, a pattern, a relationship with money. The, the question really is, so how's that working for you? Okay. You know, it, in other words, we're either codependent with it, and a codependency relationship means, you know, that we're really addicted to it. We're really addicted to it. That we, have, we can develop an independent relationship. That is, we're independent of it. We say, well, you know, it... It doesn't matter at all. I'm just not, I'm, it, it doesn't mean anything. Or we can develop an interdependent, truly functionally working sort of relationship with money. And that's probably the healthiest place we can be. We understand what money can do for us. We understand what money can't do for us. But can you see why money is so important in our lives? See, so you could be a billionaire and still be poor. Let me say that again. You could be Donald Trump and still be poor. See, if you're constantly concerned about how much money you need, then irrespective of the actual dollar amount you have in the bank, you're still really poor. So there are emotional states that go with money. We're either, we either feel disabled by it or we are disabled by it. We're in a disability state. We're in an enabling state. We're a power state. If you've taken a seminar for me in the last 30 years, you've seen this model. Because generally what happens is we start out down here someplace in dental school. We start making a little bit of money. We start getting up a little bit, and then we expand our office. And then we buy a big house, and now we're back into disability. So throughout our lives, because we, we don't have control of money, Money ends up controlling us. Let me give you an example. Let me give you a real life story, okay, about a dentist. I'm not going to tell you where he's from. 
But here's a dentist with two offices, with one associate that takes in three and a half million dollars a year. Okay? He could even be on this webinar. I, don't, I didn't look to see who's on. And he tells me, you know, I could afford to take, now, now listen to me, this is 3.5 million a year. I could afford to take a week off. I could afford the 10,000 to go on a vacation. I just can't afford the 70,000 I'd lose that month, month when I'm gone. Another dentist tells me, who's 56 years of age, is a specialist, has two offices, wants three, struggles to pay his bills. Here's a 56-year-old pediatric dentist who's working five and six days a week to keep the doors open. Now, do you think that this dentist is in a power state, an enabling state, a disabling state, or total disability? I would say they're both someplace. So here's the deal. If you don't get control of money, it doesn't make any difference how much you make. You're still in survival. You live your life on fear and poverty. And you've got a never enough attitude about money. Okay? You're competing with everybody in your community. Okay? You're actually a taker. You have to be a taker because it's all about you. Don't you see? Because below the line, it's all about you. It, you're always looking to get. And generally, these people are unhappy. They're kind of angry. They're critical. They're depressed. Okay? What a way to live. And, you know, these are people like you and me. These are people that are going to take in 30 to 50 million in their lifetime. You know, the, the $3 million guy is going to take in 90 million in his or her lifetime, and they still are financially broke. On the other hand, you can get yourself with the proper strategies, the proper tools, the proper attitude. You, you can't get there without strategies. You don't think your way to an enabling state. You get to your enabling state the way anyone does through taking principles and making strategies out of those principles and taking action. These people are more generous. Wow, what a concept. They, they really are interested in serving others. Holy cow. They're givers. They live in abundance, not scarcity. Totally. So here are groups of people living in these various states that are having a totally different experience of life and practice. It's difficult for us to explain to people what it's like to live above the line. And they're positive. They're not negative. Okay? So why control money? Why is it so important? It's important because if we, that I, if you don't get control of money, money will control you. If you make your money your God by focusing all your goals and objectives on money, you're going to lose the game of life and maybe eternity. Each of us either controls money or we become a slave to it. Let me give you an interesting little uh, story. So I'm talking to a dentist who one of our analysts had talked to about a year ago. And about a year ago, the dentist complained that he didn't have any life, that he didn't have time to spend with his kids, that, that he, wanted, he knew he needed to save money for their education. Now they're 12 and 14, not a dime saved for their education. He was coming home distressed, and he felt bewildered. Uh, the analyst went out to the office. The spouse said, no, we're just fine. We can do it on our own. Okay? So I start talking to this dentist a year later. Guess where the de what the dentist says to me a year later? Well, I was in a sweatshop in Utah, and I really didn't like it. I was making about $260,000 a year, not saving anything, of course. I moved to California, and I developed a practice in California, and now my practice in California is is grossing about $1.3 million a year, and I'm netting the same as I was before. The only difference, this is the same guy now. I have no, no time. I have no savings. I have no money. You see, one of the things is it doesn't make any difference where you go. If you don't have strategies in place and the desire to control money, it doesn't really make any difference. You never will. So here's a dentist that could be taken four to six weeks off a year, could be netting five to six hundred thousand dollars a year, at least twice as much, have much more freedom, but hasn't chosen to take it. So why does this happen? 
It happens because making money is pleasurable, like taking drugs. Why do people take drugs? They take drugs because it makes them feel happy and they don't even have to look at their life. So too many dentists are living under the illusion that production equals wealth. And it isn't long until we actually become addicted to it. How do I know that? You have a good day. Somebody describes a good day. Well, a good day is making money. Well, some days you could be doing great things and not making so much money. But can you see how money or the lack of control of it and understanding what we give to it and don't give to it is kind of important in our lives? So if you don't get control of money, I should say we, okay, because this is every bit of this is aimed at me as well as you. This isn't about you. It's about us as human beings walking our way through life. If we don't get control of money, we'll spend our entire life working for money rather than having money work for us. So here's a couple poll questions. Is money your friend or adversary? Friend or foe? Do you have specific financial goals for your practice, for your children, for your retirement? for your taxes, for your savings? Do you track the money you spend? Do you know where your money's going? See, if you don't track, if all you track is your income and you don't track your outgo, good luck. Do you have a budget to invest in yourself and your own growth and development and your team and your office. So what is money really? Money is energy. It's nothing more or nothing less in the universe. Money is simply energy. You exchange the value of what you do with and for your patients for money. I exchange the value of what I do with and for my patients for money. Money represents the value of any service or transaction. If you work for it, your energy is active. If you have savings or investments, you have stored energy. So you exchange your money, that is energy, for things and services that you need and want. So the old adage is, I owe, I owe, I want, I want, so off to work I go. All wealth in the universe is first created by the human mind. The value of the service that you're providing is decided by the buyer and seller in every purchase or transaction. The value is decided by the buyer and the seller. Okay? Little value, that is perceived value, there's going to be a small financial return. Higher value, perceived, the greater the financial return. In every instance, the buyer, which is your patient, and the seller, which is you, believe that they're giving more than they're getting or there would be no sale. There would be no sale. So your net income and your wealth creation depends upon your ability to perceive this truth. So how does your operating system work? Okay. If you think about this, you have two as we have two aspects. We have a mind and we have a body. Okay. Our body takes the actions that our mind tells us to do. What you think determines how you feel. Sometimes how you feel can even interact with how you think. What you feel and think determines what you see. What you think, feel, and see determines what you choose, which determines what you do, which determines what you have. So you could be a small detective like we are and look at what you have and what you're doing and it will really 
tell you how you think and how you feel and what you see. Many people lack the knowledge and awareness to see. Stated in reverse, what you have, what I have, has been created by what we've done, which has been created by what you've chosen, which has been impacted by what you saw. So if we do anything in our work, we help people become more aware. We help people see with clearer eyes. We help people perceive greater truths about themselves and about life and about money, time, and people, which enables them to transform what they do. So what you saw determines what you felt, which has been determined by what you actually in the, in the, in the beginning have, have seen. So everything you see, everything I see is a projection of what you already learned. It is your illusion or the perception of reality and value. It doesn't mean that your illusion is the truth. If you have an illusion, and that's what an illusion is, an illusion is something that we believe is true but is false. If you have the illusion that production equals wealth, then you'll act like this whether it's true or it's not true. So your perception, like my perception, is my reality. But is your reality the truth? Let's suppose I've got a question for you to think about, and it'll be one of the first questions that Corbin and I ask you uh, when we begin a conversation with you about your future. It was a question that was I learned first posed by a fellow by the name of Dan Sullivan. I'm sure he got it from somebody else because Dan copies everything from other people. Let's suppose we were going to meet here three years from today, from right now. What would have had to have happened to make you feel good about your progress? Write that down. It's not a poll question because it's a longer question that we would interact with together one-on-one. -on -one. But I think it's really a powerful question because you notice it's about the future. Take yourself out three years from now. Looking back to this date, what would have had to have happened in your life and practice to make you feel good about your practice, your life? And I say life and practice because they're joined at the hip. They're intricately related. Your life doesn't get any better than your practice and your practice doesn't get any better than your life. So here's some common illusions. And I already mentioned that an illusion is something that we, we believe is true but it's false. Most have the illusion if they're making a lot of money and buying a lot of stuff that they're wealthy. That is, a, that is an absolute lie. Almost everything is sold to us dentists based on the illusion that if we increase production, everything is going to be just fine. Why do illusions work? Well, number one, it's less frightening to go on the way we are than to stop and think, holy cow, I could be wrong. Wow. It's easier to base our life on secondhand opinions, hearsay, and presumptions than to think for ourselves, and that's why it's so vitally important when we interact with you that we have some simple conversations with you so that you're able to develop a practice in life that represents you, and you'll love it when you do. Core change is difficult. Better to live with unsatisfying aspects of our lives and businesses than make change from the inside out. Better to just try to grab the next quick fix or the next tip at a seminar or a webinar and think we're going to get it because it's easier. We don't really have to think deeply about it. It's difficult and time consuming to invest and diagnose, right? It's better to draw quick conclusions to write out quick prescriptions, whether we're right or we're wrong. But the issue here is our lives are at stake. Your life is at stake. Your children's life is at stake. Your children's children's life is at stake. Because 
your kids, your children, don't do what you say. They do what they see us doing. For their own safety and gain, people are willing to tell us what they, they think we want to hear rather than tell us what the truth is. So we avoid the truth. It's better and easier to live with the illusions. Truth is often difficult to face, so better just stay positive and save the ugly things for later. Facing the truth about our situation can be painful, so it's easier to just pretend. It's easier to take the drink. It's easier to buy the next thing. It's easier to put something on a credit card. It's easier, it's easier, it's easier than facing the truth. But why they don't work, okay? They don't work because they're usually better to believe a lie than to face the truth. Illusions are a human sickness that cripples us in one form or another. We all, we all have illusions. We all, not, none of us ever knows all the truth. But what's that statement? The truth, the truth, it will set you free. It's, it's through the pain of solving problems that we learn, grow, and evolve. When Scott Peck wrote his book, The Road Less Traveled, uh, only about 30 million copies of this book have been sold. Here's what he said. The opening of the first paragraph of the book said, life is difficult. This is a great truth, one of the greatest truths. It's a great truth because once we truly see this truth, we can transcend it. Once we truly know that life is difficult, once we truly understand and accept it, then life is no longer difficult. Because once it's accepted, the fact that life is difficult no longer matters. Most do not fully see that life is difficult. Instead, they moan more or less incessantly, noisily, and subtly about the enormity of their problems, like lack of money, lack of sales, lack of profit, lack of growth. They moan about their burdens, their difficulties, as if life were supposed to be easy, or at least it should be easy. They voice their belief noisily or subtly that their difficulties represent a unique kind of affliction that should not be and has somehow been especially visited upon them or else their families, their tribe, their class, their nation, their race, even their species, and not about others. I know about this moaning because I've done up my own share. Life is a series of problems. Do we want to moan about them or solve them? Do we want to teach our children to moan about them or solve them? And here's what Peck says. Discipline is the set of tools that we, uh, we require to solve life's problems. Without discipline, we can solve nothing. With only some discipline, we can solve only some problems. With total discipline, we can solve all of life's problems. What makes life difficult is that the process of confronting problems, and I would say illusions, is sometimes a painful one. It requires the four following tools of discipline, which have been and continue to be embedded in the philosophy of the Schuster Center since its inception. Number one is delayed gratification. Number two is acceptance of responsibility. Problems can't be solved except by solving them. This is my problem and it's up to me to solve it. I have to find the tools and the strategies to solve the problem. It's dedicated to reality, which is the truth, to discover truths and to develop strategies to apply these truths in my life. And the fourth tool of discipline is balance. Balance is the discipline that gives us flexibility. And flexibility is what's required to live in a world with many challenges. So as we move forward, we talk about over and over again Structure determines behavior, determines results. And as I said earlier, and I want to emphasize this, the longer you're in the wrong structure, the harder things get. The longer you're in the right structure, the easier things get. Ask any couple who've been married a long time, period of time and their life is going beautifully well. 
the longer they're in the right structure together in the relationship, the better things get. Ask any couple who is in having difficulties in their marriage, in their relationship, and they will tell you it keeps getting worse as they get older. Okay? So not everything that's faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it's faced. The less clearly you and I see the reality of our world, the more our minds and lives are befuddled by falsehood, misinterpretation, and illusions the less able we are to correct the course of action and make wise decisions. Here's a couple illusions I want to share with you that I have many times. The more I produce, the more money I'm making. That's an absolute lie. The more I produce, the wealthier I am. Think about it. What is wealth but a state of abundance? Seeing more patience is the answer to my cash flow problems. Getting advanced technical training or a specialty degree will solve my money problems. Nope, it'll just compound them. I can run my business on an accounting statement. You see, accounting is not reality. An accounting statement is almost designed as a fictional uh, representation of what's, what you're really doing. I don't need a coach. I don't need a model. I don't need a method. I can do it on my own. Everything will work out just fine. I just need some more time, and it's going to work out. Every one of these statements are false. They are all lies. They are illusions that will deceive you, cripple you, hurt you. So is money important? Okay. I mentioned initially that I was going to talk to you about this a moment because your ability, your income depends upon your ability to sell. Nowhere in your educational experience has anyone ever taught you the value and importance of money in any transaction or purchase. If you've never learned how money works and how to sell, then you're likely never going to create true wealth. If you never learn how to build a business that's a wealth-creating system, then I can literally assure you that you're going to be part of the 95% of dentists that can't afford to retire, no matter how much money they've make, made, no matter how many years they've done it. So all wealth-creating system, any, that is, any wealth-creating system is a value-creating system. Any wealth-creating system is a value-creating system. So if you don't understand how money works, then you'll never come close to your human potential. If you don't get serious about it, okay, You'll never get there. You have to get behind money so that you can release your potential. In fact, your profit will be about one-third in your lifetime what it could have been if you truly understood that money is directly equated to value in every transaction. So why is money so important? Well, we have all these things to deal with money. Earning, of course, which is income. Spending, of course, which is our expenses. We have this relationship that goes on between saving, debt. Okay, We have the issue of investing, taxes. Of course, we also have the issue of giving and saving. I mean, all these aspects, earning, spending, saving, investing, giving, they're all income, expenses, debt, taxes, and savings. I mean, they're just part of a, of a very simple system or could be a simple system if it was organized and there were strategies for each one of these. So here comes the money. Here goes the money. Okay? It goes to both fixed and variable business expenses. It goes to both fixed and variable uh, personal expenses. It goes to taxes. And we can see that our government has some real plans for us relative to our taxes. And it goes into the savings and investment bucket. Okay? So in the world I work in, one of the things that we really work at, we have to understand we have all these buckets. But what, what I want to be able to do is take some of the money that we're spending here and move it over into the savings account, take some of the money that we're spending here. I honestly believe, I just talked to a group of specialists, and I told this group there's seven 
Dennis in this group, and I said on average, each of you is spending forty to fifty thousand dollars a year too much in taxes. That means that you as a group are spending someplace between two hundred and eighty and three hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year too much in taxes here. This money should be over here. None of them have a plan. None of them have control of money. None of them have control of money in their business, their personal, their taxes, anything. Can you imagine seven dentists working together in a group practice and none of them have a clue about money in their lives? This is average. This is average of what we see. So your relationship with money impacts your entire life. If you don't get control of money, your life is going to be really small. You know, I talked to a dentist the other day. So here's a dentist who had an office three years ago, and the office had three staff people, and he was doing 650000 He's now done, down to one staff member and one, one uh, and 400000 So is, his, is he growing or getting – and you could say, oh, it's the economy. Well, listen, I can take you to any – city in the United States, large or small, and I can, I can show you dentists whose practices are literally growing. So once you start getting control of money, your vision and life gets bigger because it's not all about you anymore. Okay? You have time for your family. You have time for relationships with your staff member. You have time to talk to people. Okay? And so the, your your life gets bigger and bigger. If you don't control money, it con continues to stay small. So I ask you these questions. Is money really important? In fact, I think it's so important to develop a positive relationship with it. I'm not sure, as you're listening to this, if you're getting serious about your, your life and your relationship with money. So if you look back over the last five years, see how much money you put in the bank versus how much you've made and spent. So here's a couple poll questions. Where do you want to be in five years? Take yourself out three years, take yourself out five years from now and say, this is where I want to be five years from now. Are you ready to take charge of money in your life so you can take control of the rest of your life? I mean total, complete control. I don't mean partial control. I mean complete control. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready to take control of my practice in life. Yes, I want to grow and evolve as a person, as a dentist. Yes, I understand how I think and use money will be passed on to my children. Yes, money is important. Yes, I understand that the world is changing and that I either take responsibility for my life and practice through my actions or I become just another victim to be saved. So we're asking this and we're just showing you this. Right now, how much are you losing? At six hundred thousand dollars a year, probably one hundred and eight. At eight hundred thousand dollars a year, it's probably one hundred and forty-four. At nine hundred thousand dollars a year, it's probably one hundred and sixty-two. At a million dollars a year, it's probably one hundred and eighty as a minimum. In ten years, at nine hundred thousand, that's a one million six hundred and twenty thousand dollar net profit loss by those that still refuse to take the first step to get control over money. In 30 years, this becomes pretty astronomical. It's almost $5 million. So we know and we talk about this relationship between overhead and debt. So I just want to come up here in the 65% range and say to net the same at 65%, you have to, you have to produce 43% more, which really means you've got to work two days more a week than the than the dentist at 50%. At 70%, you have to produce 66% more to net the same that you would have at 50%. So you can see, I hope you can see, that overhead and what it costs you to run your practice is pretty enormous.
So this is why generally we, we really like to look at people's P&L statement. Even though we know it's fiction, uh, we take, can take that P&L statement and we can really convert it into reality. Remember we talked about uh, a little bit in former uh, webinars, we talked about uh, at, at the, the model for spending or the, the profit potential profile. When we do this initially, for someone we call this a profit potential profile because we take every expense that's on the P&L and we put it into the reality of, an exp of, of what it's costing in the practice. So here was a dentist that was one year uh, had a production of 981, the next year 1150, but actually the net, the percentage of net profit actually went down. In other words, he was working harder and harder. He produced a hundred and seventy thousand dollars more, but increased his net income ten thousand dollars, which is pretty typical if you don't know the reality of your where your money's going. So, here's I, I did this because I, I really believe it's true based upon the people I talk to every day. And remember, I just don't sit behind a desk. I'm a practicing dentist. Uh, I'm also talk with dentists. I have two dentists to talk with after this webinar. And here's actually what I see, okay? There are some people that are taking the, the positive steps and strategies towards control and growth, okay? And to do that, you need to learn, and that doesn't happen on a webinar or in a seminar, and apply the strategies for growth. And when that happens, you grow. The other choice that, that you have now or in the future is you can stay where you are. The problem with staying where we are is things are changing rapidly in dentistry. They're changing rapidly in the world, but they're changing extremely rapidly fast in dentistry. You can stagnate, stay the same, but really you know and I know that when we aren't moving forward, we're really slipping backwards. Or you can simply stay where you are and end up having less fun, less profit, and you can become a managed care dentist. Uh, or you can go to work for a corporation, or you sell your practice and go to work for a corporation. These are really the choices that we have at hand today. So how do you create growth? Okay. Well, you take ideas, you take theory, you take truths. Okay. Underneath the theory, the theory has to be correct, and then you develop, as we have at the center, strategies, tools, and methods to control money, to control time, to grow a business in sales, to, to get the right market, to develop people, and really organize around the purpose. And those strategies need to be embedded and put into the structure in your practice. Okay? When you put this in your practice and you get feedback through learning and you take action, what you experience is growth. By the way, this is a model of growth and learning from MIT, from Peter Senye and the group at NIT, because when you grow, what you get is results. Now, the important part of growth is are you growing in the direction you want to grow? We define growth as balance, increase in net profit, enjoyment, and fulfillment, but you would need to define your own results. All renewal, all change starts with vision, values, goals, because those goals ultimately determine the structure that you create, which influences the patterns of behavior that you put in place. And this process here is a process of learning and growth. So, your next step towards growth. Number one, you can't control money unless you first know where it's going. When you complete a profit control profile, we'll send you a chapter in the second edition of, of the science of creating wealth called the pitfalls of wealth creation. The profit potential profile is your next step towards financial control and financial freedom. It'll actually show you where your money's going. So please affirm yes to the last question. And then inform your receptionist that we'll be calling to schedule a time, either Corbin Reeves or myself, and we'll be happy to complete a prop, profit potential profile you. You're not committed to anything beyond that, and neither are we. Okay? 
And then when we complete that, we'll send you uh, the pitfalls of creating wealth. Hey, thanks for being here. It's been a, a kind of a good time for me to do my own evaluation and think of myself. I always think of where I am and who I am when I do these things. And I hope this has been, been beneficial for you. And as usual, I wish you all the best. Godspeed.